Right now, I'm vibrating my vocal cords a thousand times a second and wiggling my tongue around in my mouth, producing vibrations in the air, which is going into your ears and creating a picture in your mind, just like the picture I have in my mind. This is language. It's, it's really cool. Um, and it's really interesting to, to ask, where, where does this come from? How did language evolve? In our research group, we study the evolution of language using computer simulations and uh, experiments with human participants. So a typical experiment we might run where we would uh, get, a, get a bunch of people into the lab, have them learn a language that we've constructed, and then they get them to communicate with each other. And um, then we, once they've done that, we take their language and teach it to a new bunch of participants, and then a new bunch of participants. And what we, can, what we see after several generations of this process is that the languages adapt to the way the, 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 um, the participants think, or how they learn. Um, what we found in many of our experiments is that there's a trade-off between, um, well, an important trade-off. And on the one hand, you have, um, you, you want your language to be uh, useful, to be expressive, to be able to, uh, to help, help you make many different meaning distinctions. And on the other hand, you want to have a language that is learnable. Uh, if a language wasn't learnable, it would just die out, right? Um, so... I, I think that there's two types of structure in language that are, uh, that are um, shaped by these pressures. So firstly, there's structure in the, um, in the, uh, the signals that you use to produce language. So the words and the phrases, this, we call this compositional structure. So the order in which you put your words uh, changes the meaning. And secondly, there's structure in the way we carve up the space of possible meanings that we can talk about. So um, we can, so if we imagine, so this line here, imagine it represents temperature. Um, we could have a, a system that just divided that, that line of temperature into cold and freezing and warm and whatever. Or you could just have some system like this, which is just random, where a word just describes this temperature or that temperature or just any temperature, which wouldn't make any sense. This, this generalizes to higher dimensions. So if we have two dimensions, then we expect not to see a messy random system like this, but something like this, which is structured in these convex regions and up to three dimensions. So this is, this is, what, my, this is what my research has been looking at so far, this, um, co the compositional structure and how that, that gives us languages that can describe an open-ended set of meanings, but also the categorical structure that breaks up that meaning space into little uh, units that can be learned. Thank you.